I cried after making this drawing. Feeling very low and depressed then, I was surprised to find these were tears of joy. Creating this artwork had given me a massive emotional release that allowed me to see parts of myself that I thought were lost. A sense of inner peace washed over me as I let these parts of myself be seen and heard for the first time in a long time. This is shadow work, I thought. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, this was the boost I needed to keep going with my life. Hi, I'm James. In this video, I will show you how and why creating art might be the tool you need to improve your mental health. Depression affects about 280 million people worldwide, and while advancements are being made in pharmaceutical and talk therapy treatments, there doesn't seem to be much conversation around the benefits of creating art as a therapeutic tool. However, the literature is there if you're willing to look for it. There are many qualified art therapists, and while I'm not one of them, I have read many books about this topic to gain knowledge and techniques I can use to help myself and I believe the technique I'm about to share with you can help you too. Having dealt with depression for many years, I realized that the best way to combat it is to arm yourself with as many different tools and techniques as possible. That way, you always have something to go to when the darkness wants to consume you. Tools like a healthy meal, exercise, or journaling are all great options that I use, but I found that one of the best tools is drawing. Admittedly, the most challenging part about using any of these tools is that when you are feeling low, you often don't feel like doing anything. That's why I recommend setting up a space where you can keep your art materials out all of the time to lower the barrier of entry. I've always loved drawing, and although I am trained as a fine artist, I believe anyone can use art as a tool for self-therapy, whether they've studied art or not. The way I approach making these therapeutic drawings is radically different to that of my art practice. However, I am starting to integrate the two because I believe these drawings are so powerful and intriguing that I want to share them or use them as inspiration to create something new. Creating these drawings is all about the process. It's not about the final result. It's about how you feel while making the drawing that matters. And I should point out, it doesn't matter how you feel. Angry, sad, horny, excited, happy, confused, a little unsure what to expect. We are not judging ourselves or our drawings during this process. We simply notice and watch our emotions move, shift and change as we play with color, lines and shapes. So how do I make these drawings? Well, to get the best results, I recommend getting a sketchbook you can solely use for this purpose. I made several drawings before I created this one that gave me such a vast emotional release. It's also important to note that you might not experience such a powerful release of emotions. Still, I'm sure that if you stick with this process and repeat it daily or as often as possible, you will soon start feeling better. There are many mediums and techniques you can use as a therapeutic tool. However, for this video, I'm going to stick to drawing. Finding a medium that you enjoy working with but has instant application is best. I recommend colored pencils, soft pastels or oil pastels to start. These don't have to be the best quality. We're not trying to create a masterpiece. We're just looking to play and explore. A student quality set will be fine. However, I recommend getting a lot of colors to play with. My personal favorite is soft pastels. From here on out, we're going to use our intuition to help guide us through the making process. This should be easy and fun. Look at all your colors and notice what stands out to you. Don't overthink this. Pick a color that sticks out and start making marks with it. When you've exhausted yourself of that color or feel ready to change, simply choose another color and start making marks again. Keep it abstract. You don't have to draw anything specific. You may notice shapes or patterns that remind you of certain things, and that's great. Be aware of thoughts and emotions as they arise, but don't judge them. Allow yourself to keep drawing. Remember, this is a process. Through creating, you will naturally start to release emotions as you follow your instincts. 
This process is all about getting in touch with those parts of yourself that you want to be seen and heard. By creating marks on a page, you are giving them a voice. Do as many drawings as you need during your session, and when you feel ready to put down your materials, allow yourself to observe your emotional state. Take some time to look and reflect on your drawings. What do you see? How do they make you feel? Sometimes it's good to come back to your drawings after a few hours or days and look at them with fresh eyes. This will give you a new perspective on what you may have felt then. If you do decide to work on loose sheets of paper and not in a sketchbook, consider taping them to a wall so you can reflect on them throughout your day. Make this a practice and repeat the process as many times as you need to. This is not a one and done thing. You can return to this practice again and again regardless of how you feel and use it to take you on a spiritual journey towards self-healing. I hope this helped you and I'm looking forward to seeing the drawings that you create. Let me know in the comments below what are some techniques you use to promote good mental health. If you have any questions or ideas for things you want me to talk about in future videos, you can post those down there too. Alternatively, you can reach out to me via email as I have said, I'm not a licensed therapist, but if there's anything I can do to help, I'm here for you. I wish you all the best on your self-healing journey. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Until next week, have a good week. Goodbye.